nature. Gentle, kind, peaceful, wrong. It's a war for resources out there, man. There's limited space, nutrients, water, light. Some plants will coexist if they can, but if they can't, it's going to turn into a competition to see who's the most fit. And let's be honest, nature doesn't give out participation ribbons. But how do plants compete? They don't have teeth or claws, so we're not going to see them duking it out gladiator style anytime soon. They're much more subtle than that. Some plants will grow larger leaves to capture more sunlight. Other plants will have more refined root systems that will absorb more water and nutrients faster than their competitors. Sure, that seems all passive and lovely, but some plants are so desperate to come out on top that they'll kill any other plant that stands in their way via biological warfare. In this video, we're going to be testing the negative allelopathic effects of eucalyptus leaves and leaf litter on the growth of radish seeds. This information is being presented to you by Team Koala. First, let's pose our question. Are eucalyptus leaves or leaf litter allelopathic? Now let's remember allelopathy is a biological phenomenon by which an organism produces one or more biochemicals that influence the growth, survival, or reproduction of other organisms. Now, in reality, this could be positive or negative, but in this test, we're going to focus only on the negative. Our null hypothesis for this experiment is that eucalyptus leaves and leaf litter will not negatively affect the growth of the radish seeds. Now, our alternative hypothesis, what we're really testing here, is that eucalyptus leaves and leaf litter will negatively affect the growth of our radish seeds. Now, Team Koala designed an experiment to test these hypotheses. We set up nine petri trays lined with filter paper, each containing ten radish seeds. The first three trays was our control group, the second three trays was our test group for leaves only, and then the third set of trays was our test group for leaf litter only. We collected 50 fresh leaves and 50 dry leaves, and recorded the masses to be 1.93 grams and 1.10 grams, respectively. We crushed the fresh leaves to a thick pulp and pulverized the litter into a fine brown powder. We steeped each of them in their own beaker containing 200 milliliters of hot tap water for five minutes. The liquids were then separated from the solids and cooled in 25 milliliter graduated cylinders for 15 minutes. Each tray of seeds was watered with eight milliliters of its respective water. So our control group now only received plain H2O. Our leaf test group received our bright green broth, and our litter test group received the dingy brown broth. Then we waited for seven days. After the seven days passed, we noticed right away that all our trays experienced growth. Hmm. We thought if our eucalyptus leaves were negatively allelopathic that it would kill the growth factor of the radish seeds entirely. But since all nine trays showed signs of growth, we had to measure the growth of each sprout to see if maybe the eucalyptus retarded the growth instead. If this were true, then we would have expected to see greater growth in our control group when compared to our test groups. Here's what we found. The average growth for our control group was 5.88 centimeters. The average growth for our litter test group was 6.98 centimeters, and the average growth for our leaf test group was 5.98 centimeters. Now, according to these results, our control group had the least amount of growth, and the litter group had the most amount of growth. Now, one would think based on these results that this would prove that eucalyptus leaves were not negatively allelopathic at all, but maybe even positive. But before we go jumping to any conclusions, let's list a few confounding variables that could have played a role in our results. One, we did not have a thermometer available to measure the temperature of the water when steeping the leaves in the litter. This can mean that the temperature varied for each group, or it could mean that the water was too hot altogether and killed off any possible biochemicals from the eucalyptus. Two, after the seven days passed, we noticed that one of the lids to our petri dishes in the leaf test group was displaced, and the water had completely evaporated. This would have played a major role in the growth of those sprouts. And three, while Team Koala felt that using steeped broths from our leaves and litter should have been enough to show allelopathic effects of eucalyptus on the seeds, we must not rule out the possibility that had we used the matter itself from the leaves and litter, we could have seen alternative results. 
Since there were so many variables that impacted our experiment, we're sorry to report that Team Koala could not reach an ultimate conclusion on the negative allelopathic effects of eucalyptus leaves or leaf litter on the growth of radish seeds. <coughs> to come to any sort of conclusion, we'd have to run the experiment again, with tighter restrictions this time in order to rule out the variables that were impeding our results. We would need access to a thermometer to regulate the temperature of the water to brew our leaves and litter at. Also, it would ensure that temperatures would be uniform throughout the test groups as well as within the appropriate range as not to destroy any biochemicals. We could also include additional trays that not only had the brew, but also the leaf and litter matter with the seeds. The issue with the lid being displaced could easily be rectified by simply taping the lids onto the petri trays. Even though Team Koala wasn't able to reach a definitive conclusion on the allelopathy of eucalyptus leaves or litter, that doesn't mean that those plants who use biological warfare to execute their competition aren't out there. To you and I, the plant day kingdom may seem peaceful and a place to retreat for a moment of tranquility, but as you lie under the shade of a tree, in a bed of comfy grass, near a bush of brightly colored bulbs, remember, there's a silent war taking place.